What up, guys? This is Tulip from Effective Man, and today is the first podcast of many. I'm super stoked. I'm excited for this. Today, I'll be interviewing Noah Murphy, and we'll be talking about startup companies. We're going to be talking about marketing advertisements. So it's going to be jam-packed with information and jewels. Hope you guys get your notepads out and stay tuned. Yeah. Okay, the first question I have, like, is basically, like, who are you? Like, if someone, someone doesn't know who Noah is, you know For what sure. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> nope. You don't know who I am already? Come on. Come on you gotta know. Um, <laughs> yeah. True. Um, so, who am I? Yeah. Um, I'm just, um, I'm a recent graduate yeah. uh, from Centennial College. Just, I'm a, I'm a guy trying to make his way through his career, I guess. Mm. Um, I come from a big family. Yeah. Um, I am I myself am a foster child, so yeah. um, I grew up in care. I like been the same family since I was like three years old, which is fantastic. And yeah. I love yeah. my parents, and it's been great. I have like seven brothers and sisters, so it's it's, it's always a lively yeah. place. I had I had like th- what I have like three in foster care. I think I had three <laughs> or four. Yeah, it was all boys, and it's just like <laughs> it was crazy, man. Yeah, was fun time. Well, life is always life is hilarious. It's having yeah. like seven other people like in your house it's it's never a dull moment so yeah it's, for sure it's different amazing. perspectives too right part of, yeah exactly yeah, exactly for sure. uh, but pretty cool um what else uh like i said i'm in i'm kind of trying just just graduated i'm trying to get into advertising yeah. um big family just trying to figure out my life right so no, that's for sure but yeah and like just a guy who likes to enjoy life takes a day at a day at a time and, yeah um, I'm a guy. I love sports. Like I'm into hockey, basketball, like all that kind of stuff. The normal go. kind of like 24 year old yeah. kind, of, kind of guy. Go Toronto for sure. Turn on Raptors Toronto, all day. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually kind of funny. Every time, whenever I like leave Toronto or leave yeah. Canada, yeah. Uh, everybody always asks me, "Hey, Noah, you know Drake? You must know Drake." <laughs> I'm not. I don't know Drake. That's yeah. not how. It works. Yeah. But it's just kind of funny. Yeah, one like, thing from Toronto, well, you, you have to know it. Yeah, one thing I noticed out here when I do travel outside the city is that people are like, oh, 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 you're from Toronto? I'm like, yeah, but I'm not like from Toronto, like in exactly. Toronto. I'm, I'm like, not, exactly. around the GTA, greater area of Toronto. <laughs> that was like Toronto, like commuting distance. Like, I'd be in Toronto like oh, 20, God. 30 minutes. Yeah, the like, all right, distance. you're from Toronto. I'm like, oh. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the fact of like starting business and and doing a startup, like what yeah. what initially, like what was that itch you had to start a company? Like where did that come from? <laughs> you know what I mean? Just curiosity, I guess. Uh, it's um, yeah. a lot of it. So, it's kind of started in university. Yeah. Um, and now I think about it, university it was like six, five ish years ago. So it feels like kind of a long time ago now but yeah um, it's just a lot of networking and learning like what business was about because i went mm-hmm. i went like leave from high school and you kind of like you have an idea that you what you want to do like, oh i want to go into business but you have no idea what like business is so broad yeah. market is so broad you know so like yeah. what the heck am i gonna do right For sure. um and just like talking to lots of people like networking from day one yeah and i'm just like learning what's out there and the different possibilities and just understanding like the resources that are available. And I was like, man, I want to, I want to start something. It's like, I want to, I don't want to like, when I first started, I, I want to learn as much as I can yeah. in a period of time. Sure. And the best way to do that is through a startup company is just do something on your own. Sure. Um, and I, I ended up kind of like linking up or meeting up with my professor and he's yeah. like, yeah, we're st- I'm thinking about doing a startup company. Um, you seem like a very like uh, aspirational person. Like you want to yeah. go out and make something yourself. I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. Um, and like we just kind of hit it off and like kind of like brainstorm, like did stuff back, like bouncing just stuff off each other's head. And yeah, for sure. Went there like as soon as I graduated, or even even before I graduated, we started doing it. Wow. Um, and then it just like once I obviously left school, we did I did it full time. Yeah. And it just went off. From there. So you got that guidance from a professor. Like you have yeah, that, wow, that's so rare. Yeah. Cause so many people like search for those like type of like 
you know, hierarchy role models in a sense. Yeah. Someone that's been through it and they can't find it. Because for myself, I'm just learning. I'm learning the game as it goes. Yeah. Me and my close friend just learning it. Like we're going through so much yeah. and we're like, okay, we're not, we can't get these handouts, not handouts, but like help. We're not yeah, getting no, help, sure. so. I feel you, man. You're like, yeah. you're like grasping the straws and you're like, where, where can I go from here? And I need to figure out, like, I don't know what to do next. Cause I've never done, I've never done this. It's exactly. like, learn a new school skill and you're like yeah. i've never done this there's no manual to this for sure it's and a big gotta, risk like, you gotta make take. the manual as you go along right yeah for sure it take, takes persistence yeah exactly but um what i've learned at least now um as like kind of at least start in that space is there are a lot of resources out there yeah. that obviously as students or as young professionals we have no idea what's out there the internet um, for one came before like the fact that there is a lot of opportunities out there mm -hmm. but it's like a giant ocean of like opportunity and it's like where do you dive in first like yeah where, like, you don't have that guidance or at least not right away you don't know where to where to access that right obviously oh, sure. um so what i've learned or at least what i try to practice is like networking and just if you go to every opportunity possible and talk to whomever you're gonna mm. find somebody who has done a little bit more than you, or has done a lot more than you, or is in the same spot as you, yeah. and you get some guidance. Maybe you're at the same spot, but you've had different experiences and you have different resources to share. Well, um, so it's what I'm looking at is that you're never alone, because as much as like it is your company, it's your mm. idea. Yeah. I, nobody wants to see you fail, and they want to see like everybody wants to help with a comrade or help their peer, or help their friend Definitely. succeed. Or if you have a good idea or a good concept. Yeah. They want to see it come to fruition. They want to see it happen. So just trying to meet people and figure out what you can do. And that's what, again, that's what I did in university is to talk to whomever. And that's mm -hmm. how I met my professor. And like, uh, it was more, more informal. It wasn't just like in his classroom. Like I talked to him outside of class. I'm like, um, we used to ask about opportunities. And yeah, that's all you yeah. do is just be hungry and look for more stuff. Oh, for sure. That's the best way to do it. Because like, I noticed like when you, take the time to talk to get to know your teachers you get so much more information you get to know them like as you build that rapport it takes you like yeah. phenomenal like ways down the road like it's right. so valuable you know especially yeah especially college or university whatever these are professionals who are in the who are in the industry or have done work prior to this right so yeah. they obviously they've learned from their failures or they're succeeding in something that enough that they, they're able to come back and like generate some knowledge there right and give for that sure. to you sure. so just you utilize what's around you to try to benefit or uh, benefit yourself and like learn from that right so for sure and they and and they want to help you that's the that's the thing right they yeah they want to help you yeah and i agree but at the same time like Again, it's never happened to me, but like understanding like who's there to help you. Just, again, there's there's always like the world is big, right? So you never know yeah. who's out there and yeah. like out there to help you or who's here to like take advantage of you. But again, yeah. I've never had it happen, but you still have to be a side of caution, right? For understand sure. that like just your idea. You don't want to be you don't want to keep it too close to your chest, but For sure. you want to be able to understand and utilize the resources around you and yeah. go from there. You got you got to be book smart and book smart and street smart at the same time. Exactly. exactly yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. And you know you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna mess up sometimes. That's yeah. what happens. Oh no! I, you just learn from that. Those are your, those are the biggest learning. Those are the biggest <laughs> learns you got. The mistakes are the biggest learns you ever uh, do in your life. Like for me, when I moved out here, like I <laughs> my friend says I got like financially beat up. You know, <laughs> like it was like a turn for the worse for me. Everything was because you know for every bad thing there's always a good good there's always a good outcome to it you know, and there's so many things I learned from just being out here like business savvy, being aware, you know yeah you're always looking around like watching your pockets you know so <laughs> yeah yeah it's, yeah for sure man it I feel it you. builds you a lot out here in Toronto for sure <laughs> so for sure yeah my next question is like where so where did the idea of your business come about? With, you said you did you start it with your friends or was it individually or how did it come about and where would it for sure. where did the idea so, come from? Well, yeah, for sure. So well the business itself, again, um we kind of I kind of collaborated with my professor. I did have like a few uh peers yeah. um I like that I was going to school with that we yeah. kind of like collectively thought of. Yeah. Um but we're just like we were so my university, um excuse me. 
it's like a tech school. It's a business technology mm-hmm. school. Or yeah. like, how can we optimize this our resources here and like use our business savvy skills that we are learning as well as a technology uh, technological skills. Yeah. Um, so that's what we created the tech startup um, that we did. Yeah. Um, and then at the time we're like, okay, so what resources do we have? Um, what is what, what's what need is there at the moment? Mm. And how can we optimize that? How can how can we utilize that to our advantage? Yeah. Um, and at the time, at the time that we were going to start this, the, I don't remember, don't know if you remember the Pan Am Games. Yeah, I remember the Pan Am uh, Games. Yeah. So that the, 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 like people from all over the world coming That's here, right. athletes, the global, just like a lot of tourism coming in. And we're like, okay, that's mm. maybe we can utilize that somehow. Yeah. Um, um, and also like the the municipal uh, mis- like Toronto itself yeah uh, was like they're they're optimizing stuff like carpool lanes they're doing like uh, just optimizing now because they had they knew a lot of traffic was coming in yeah and we're like hey all this is happening let's try to create like something to utilize to optimize this For sure. and we carpool an application at the time um, so that matched drivers with obviously passengers okay. Um, it's kind of different. Again, we we tried to um, kind of distinct it away from Uber because obviously mm-hmm. Uber is very mm-hmm. quick transportation. You have like kind of more of a taxi system. Yeah. Uh, and what we wanted to utilize or what we wanted to do is um, carpooling. So if I'm driving okay. to work every day, if I'm yeah. going to work in Toronto, 35, 45 minute commute, yeah. uh, I'm going to pick somebody up who's in my area yeah. and he's also going to around my area. Oh. Of- so I'm not going out of my way. Yeah. And at the same time, I would be, and yeah. I'm not. I'm not a taxi. I'm not gonna go drop you off and pick up another person. I'm just going from my destination or from my original origin place. Yeah. Yeah. My my to where I'm going to go to work. And yeah. I what I did that actually for work while yeah. I was do, while I was going working on a startup because I had to drive to Toronto every day. Wow. And I was like I actually saved. So generally, I would spend maybe fifty, sixty bucks on gas a week. I only am spending about twenty bucks a week, wow. so I cut 30, 40 bucks a week just off gas. And then, as a passenger, generally, if you're if you're commuting every day, you don't have a car, yeah. you're taking a train down. Yeah. It's about an hour and a half, forty five minutes to an hour um, to commute, right? Yeah. So now, like, you cut your time in half to like twenty five, thirty five minutes wow. from like an hour and a half, from an hour and a half. So, so it's like so for- again, that was, that was our main goal. Yeah. That, that, and again, within the first three months, we subscribed five thousand people. Whoa. Okay. Well, hold on to hold on to that. I just need to turn this light because it's getting dark. Sure. Yeah. Right sure, now, man. Say. Five thousand. Oh. So, yeah, so, 5, so for the people that don't know, it's a, it's a, it was an app. That's what it, it was. It was an app. Wow. Exactly. So you Amazing. download your, yeah, your Apple, your Samsung, your Android, whatever. Yeah. Uh, kind of our revenue generating models. So how we kind of we wanted to make money too. Yeah. Is of we, course. Exactly. Right. So we actually we took a percentage of what the driver would be making so a very small percentage of course but optimally like the driver isn't losing out on any money because he's still he or she is still going to be driving to that area they're not going to be spending extra gas driving around right yeah so the win for the driver because they were reducing the amounts they'd spend on gas yeah and it it was exactly right um and it's the barrier to entry to get into this it was a lot was better because anybody before us, um, they they optimized or they they were able to do long distance carpooling. So a lot of people were like, I'm driving for the weekend from Toronto to Kingston. There were other companies already because again, yeah. when you're ent- when you're entering a space, you obviously have to do a competitive analysis, see what's already in the market, analysis process, what are people yeah. already doing, yeah. Um, and the fact that people weren't able to um, kind of lock down the short everyday commute if i was like friday night or friday afternoon and i'm going to kingston i would find people in my area and i would drive down with yeah. three or four people the people like there's other companies doing that but they were not able to do everyday um commuting yeah like every day like monday to friday oh, whatever like on a regular basis like on a regular schedule basis. exactly on a schedule and so, so that how we niche. started yeah. um our model right away was to target uh, university students perfect yeah. mainly because of the central hub the fact that there is one large destination yeah thousands of students a thousand of people are driving to every day yeah so like because like so how, it goes back to the whole chicken and egg thing where it's like people want to get 
the, the drivers want to be on the application only if there's passengers there. That's correct. Yeah. Passengers want to be on the application only if there's drivers there. Yeah. Nobody wants to be the first person. Nobody wants to be the guinea pig. It's never like that. <laughs> but yeah. Like you can sign up a thousand drivers right off the bat. Yeah. Then you have two thousand passengers ready to go. Oh, for sure. Um, and how are you going to get a thousand drivers going to a general location? Universities, mm-hmm. students. There's a thousand people every day, roughly the same time, going to one giant location. Yeah. And that's how and that's how you picked up steam. It's actually yeah. kind of funny. When I was doing my research to like learn about like Uber and stuff, Uber actually paid the first like two to four thousand drivers. Yeah. Like they paid they like they paid them because like instead of like the passengers paying them, yeah, they paid people to they sign up in advance. Them. Yeah, and they paid them in advance. Okay. Because they wanted to incentivize drivers to to start on the application. Yeah, for sure. And which kind of which kind of which kind of interesting because that that's just, you once you build up steam and get people on the application. Or organically will grow. Yeah, it is steam like, rolls. The initial, the initial starting point to build that fire to let it start burning, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the hardest part. Over oh, sure. So it's good. I mean, it's a good learning opportunity, learning from that experience and like how to start ignite that. Yeah, for um, sure. There's stuff like again, there's there were days or weeks where we're scratching our head like how the how the heck are we gonna start to get this off for the sure. ground? That's like the first part. Yeah, like exactly. How do you begin once it's it's so easy. Well, not easy, but it's so much easier to build a snowball once it's already big. For sure. It, but it's hard to like compact, compact it. Shit. Yeah. yeah, compact it for sure. Exactly right. Like you so. guys ran, you guys ran through a lot of like software issues, didn't you, with the app? Did or because yeah. that's probably so, something I so Apple is Apple the worst to start an app on. It's really? so many like on Samsung on Android. Yeah, anybody can put an app on there. Anybody Isn't you can be funny? like. You can be like a high school student who is like, I have an idea, mm-hmm. and just send it into Android or and Samsung, they'll and they'll approve it like that. Yeah. Apple takes weeks and they wow. scrutinize everything, and they're like, if they don't like it, it is not going to the platform, and they are oh. the one. It's so hard to get on there. That is so crazy, annoying. and this yeah, is something like, that's that's going to help society. This is yeah, not right? like, well, it's again, not like a future so- emoji. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. There's, but like, once you're on there, you, you're getting sustainable, and you have a good model. Like, they'll accept you. Mm-hmm. But even like, um, doing up- updates, like you, updates for Apple, like to, you have to show like all your work under like, uh, like you have to outline every little little uh, pinpoint of like yeah. what you're updating, what's changing, because Apple will not approve it unless you outline to them exactly what's going to be changing on your your platform. Wow. Well, Samsung, they're like. Whatever, do what you need to do, and they'll yeah. let you do it. And it's just like, uh, I don't uh, know. It's, they're, they're, it's frustrating. They're, they're, they're way more open. open. I, don't, I don't think I don't think Apple has changed since yeah. then. Yeah. You know, I haven't done an application in a few years, so I don't actually know. Yeah. But like, I'm pretty sure they're the same. And it's yeah. Hopefully, they, they leaned off that a little bit restrictions because <laughs> Android is a little more a lot more accessible for a lot of people. I noticed. Yeah. And I guess that's the reason they, they run through Android. An apple maybe maybe yeah. so like what what motivates you because you guys obviously found a niche <laughs> and you guys you guys targeted you guys like this is what is going to prove the kids around us in the area why we go to university so what motivates yeah. you what what's that thing that gets you driving to go driving to wake up the next day and just be like <laughs> yeah like just to like you know what i mean like is it is there something you can like look at and be like okay I have like you're creating this purpose or something like that. For sure. Well, I know it's it's hard to say specifically one thing because there's sure. many things that like, are motivating me. Whether it's yeah, yeah, uh, it's totally like it's so many different. Like I want to succeed in life because like obviously you only get one chance in life and you want to like Most make the best of it, right? Most definitely. Um, yeah. And it was, whether it's just like um, my family at home, like I, again, like if you, I know, like later, like I know we talk, like we want to talk about like. Who inspires you and stuff but like yeah my i don't like my my mom she's like a, an amazing person she motivates me to like be better every single day and understand like what's what's like you got to work for what's ahead ahead and if you want to succeed in life yeah you got to work for it the opportunity might be there yeah you gotta you gotta go go out there and get it right yeah so, so uh, she's like your inspiration man i guess yeah her yeah. like my mom maybe my younger sister as well she's like my younger sister is like a motivational speaker and like amazing. She, 
If I see her stuff she does, I'm like, damn, I need to that step sounds, up my game. Can't, yeah, let her, for sure. <laughs> can't let her beat me, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's be competitive <laughs> competition. But it's just to, I don't know, to make the best of my life, right? That's, oh, no, for sure. 100, 110% agree. Like, that's just like for me, my motivation is create. I created this purpose and I'm just manifest, manifesting on it. And I'm looking at my past, and I'm like, what do I want to change about it? Like, obviously, help my mom in a better situation, you know, for people in, in my situation of like, people are growing up, they want to start something for themselves, but they don't know where to start or how to start. And yeah. just leaving like a legacy, man, because just like, in your, just like you, man, you made <laughs> life once. I haven't, let, I haven't made a legacy yet. I'm working We're towards starting. that. We're starting, yeah. We, you, start, <laughs> you start to it. You build it. <laughs> exactly. It comes from the thought, man. Yeah. Exactly. You got to have the hunger and drive to hunger do something. And drive. Some people just don't have it. It's true. It's sometimes. <laughs> it's just how it is sometimes, but that's reality. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so how do, you, how do you define success? Success. How do I define success? Yeah, how do you define success? Um, well, I think like just success in general is kind of subjective. It's yeah. Everybody, everybody has their own definition of what they think of success is. For but sure. if I had to like think of it myself, I think it's just being better than you were yesterday. It's just being like as long as you mm-hmm. are improving, you're succeeding. You have to be able to see like people say like celebrate the little things, celebrate the big things. But just in general, if you can look back yesterday and see that you have changed or if you've improved or you're working towards something that's success yeah well people put this success on some pedestal and say i have to hit this main goal i have to make i have to be the richest person in my neighborhood i have to be a ceo yeah, like yeah sure, that's success. but success is working towards that it's being sure. better than or last week than you were a month ago than you were this morning saying like if you could wake up in the morning yeah um and then go to like have a goal or have a dream or whatever and go to bed and see and like say that you accomplished something mm. success man like that's that's success right there you don't have to hit some big pedestal of i need to hit a hundred thousand before i'm 30 or i need yeah, to be it's true. 30 under 30 or i need to be ceo of my company or whatever like yeah sure those are goals and that is success yeah you just gotta be like you gotta work towards that and you just be better than you were yesterday yeah so for sure. that's how you define success yeah, like even for you, like being a co-founder of this app company, like that's just that people look like people, young people will be like, yo, that's very successful. You know what I mean? But it all comes in from, it all comes in increments. Like that's how I believe it is. Like, like micro goals. That's how I break it down for myself. Yeah. I don't, I know my intentions long-term, but I just break down the micro goals from like day to day. Let's achieve this. Let's achieve this. And it just compounds over time, you know? exactly i don't want to i don't want to overwhelm myself with like smack dab this is what i want to do in life and yeah you know you're weighing yourself down with your big expectations but you take it slow you know? yeah man i yeah. feel it just, someone told me just celebrate the little things whether yeah. it's wake up just wake up in the morning or you, you had a healthy breakfast or yes. you went for a run or you met somebody new that day or whatever yeah. it is celebrate the little things because they all add up to something big and Eventually, you'll look back at your life 10 years from now and be like, damn, yeah. I've done all this stuff. Or somebody else will, be like, will look at you and be able to say, like, damn, you've done all this stuff. And you don't yeah. realize it. You're just too busy living life. And oh, you're sure. enjoying the little things. Enjoying so. the moment, man. Exactly. Because <laughs> when you get to exactly. a certain level, you're going to be looking at it like, oh, that wasn't that bad. <laughs> but we, you well, know, that was just a Tuesday, whatever. Yeah. Like, I'm all, <laughs> I'm all, damn, <laughs> how the hell did you do like, that? So. You gotta commit ten years. That's all. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> not sure. So I want to ask you, like, what are three? Like, I mean, you were we're, this, we're obviously we're developing entrepreneurs and and yeah. business owners down the road as well. Like, but what do you think for right now are the three skills for an entrepreneur just to like attain up, sure. up and coming? You know. Yeah. Um, well, the, I think I spoke on the first one like a lot. It's just to be hungry. Hungry. Just to to keep wanting more and never be content just mm. like you you accomplish nothing okay what's next what where can you go from here what opportunity is next right yeah um so just uh, like that that one is hunger. definitely the first one hunger um be due diligent so mm. just being able to like due diligence in itself so that, that that just means like understanding everything going on like if you are like, get an opportunity 
you under, you have to understand everything that in, that's encompassed in that to not take things just at face value mm-hmm. to be able to look at a scenario or look at a situation or look at an opportunity and thoroughly analyze it and understand all of everything that's coming in um it's comes with experience oh, yeah. it comes and it comes just by learning right For sure. so just like I, again so like be due diligent and mm-hmm. make sure you understand everything yeah um and the third one is be inspirational be inspirational and have aspirations Definitely. it's just like having a big goal is great but yeah. ha- not just having like being able to grab ask for something that, like l- build on something or go from there sure. um and it kind of goes off to like Again, I guess I'm kind of going on a fourth thing, but like That's fine, yeah. understanding, like learning from opportunities. So just being able to accept a failure, accept yeah. like, like learn from your successes and failures, the right? So yeah. Learning, right? Those are the biggest but, learning curves. Yeah, ever, right. Ever. But people think like they want to go and they want to do everything, but they don't want to fail at it. They think this is my one idea. Yeah. Is going to make me rich. It's going to make me a CEO. Oh, for but sure. it's not. Like unless like not always, but sure. sure. So I'm saying, you build. You do. You have an idea. Mm-hmm. You build on it. You try to go as far as you can with it. Yeah. Maybe you become the next CEO or something. But maybe you take you so far and you realize, okay, it's not going to work out. But I've learned how to start a business. Sure. I've learned financial parts of it, um, or I learned networking or something random like that. And then you take that to your next idea. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny you say that because that's how I look at like my current job right now. Like I'm in retail and I'm looking at it like it's my own business so i look at it from customer service perspective management perspective how am i working with my team how am i communicating with my team you know and even with like the clients are the most important people as well as well as well as a team don't get me wrong (laughs) for sure yeah but when you build those relations and and rapport with those individuals it makes like a hell of a lot difference with everything like income will come in naturally it'll come in flowing in that's what yeah. I noticed, and that's what I've been looking at, and that's my like my state when I go to work. It's like a yeah. business, you know. <laughs> Everything's a business, right? You just gotta you gotta put one hundred ten percent into everything, and it'll come back to you. Yeah. So that's exactly it, man. Just learn from your, and you're learning from your experiences right now from every opportunity. For sure. Nothing. Yeah. So exactly, yeah. man. So that kind of leads into the next question: is like, it's like basically, so excluding yourself, what companies do you admire the most? Well, so I was, I was thinking about that that question, and yeah. uh, one co- one company that came to mind, right? Like I didn't even think about it until I guess this morning, and I was like, "Was it Tesla? Uh, what is it? Do you know the Do you know the story behind Airbnb? Like how they came to be? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was watching an interview on it. Yeah. So yeah, you know, a, like, a all, like how? Pardon? I was watching a bit of an interview on it. I didn't finish it. Yeah, it's it's actually really, like. They were like again. It goes back to being hungry and everything. But they like did everything under the sun to kind of learn, like build on their business. Yeah. Uh, so, um, just to like do a very very quick recap of what For like sure. so they, um, they were trying to obviously start. They started off like it was called Air Bed and Breakfast. Yeah. Airbnb. Yeah. Um, and they're just like they they wanted to come up with this idea to like obviously rent houses and have people come there. And that became the whole chicken and egg thing, right? Where it's like nobody wanted to put up their listing because there were nobody coming coming in to to see the see their places, right? Nobody's yeah, coming in to see yeah. them, and then vice versa. So like, how the hell are we gonna get do this? They're making no money, sure. having no 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 income. Um, and at the time, uh, I guess this was Washington, no, no, Seattle, I think it was. Um, regardless, but they had the Democratic convention coming in. Yeah. Uh, so that was like Obama, like all them, pe- all them people, yeah. um, and they were like they were to re- they were to have about like eighty thousand dollars, no, eighty thousand people renting that for like a little bit, for sure. and then it stopped. And they're like, we have no idea how to continue this. And then later on, they actually started off and they made a cereal. They called they called it Obamos, oh. and that's how they made the first. That's how they generated income to fund their initiative. Mm. So they actually created. So it's it's like. Again, so the, and the guy was like when I was looking, I probably watched the same interview as you. Yeah. And then his mom was like, "So are you like in the cereal business now? Like, what are you what are you guys doing?" Yeah. So they like they're like, they're the one co-founder. Uh, I think it was like Brian Krensky or Krensky or something. Yeah, I think it was like Brian Krensky or something. Yeah. Like 
take some money and they partner. Oh, yeah, then they, they partner. They 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 went to like General Mills and like, hey, can we like do uh, do this and like, can we like partner with you guys? And like, oh yeah, just give us two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, and we'll be able to go, like, okay, we don't we don't have that. We don't have that. Like we're we're a startup. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. So they actually they went to a friend of theirs who they went to school with. Yeah, and they're like. The guy owned a printing company, so it wasn't even a serial company. Wow. And they're like, "Here, I'll print off a thousand boxes for you guys." Mm. Um, but they they had so they printed off a thousand boxes, and they're in their house like glue gunning and everything, trying to get all these boxes ready. The and they yeah. they're selling these Obamos to wow. people, to, and they are trying to make money they off make that the sponsorship money to get the sponsor because nobody yeah. was sponsored. They thought there was a stupid idea, but yeah. they kept at it. So they end up actually going to an investor meeting. Yeah, it's funny. Um, they went to the investor meeting and they're like, um, okay, they, they pitched the idea and one of the guys just went, went left. The, the, one of the investors like, okay, I don't like this and just yeah, left. Yeah. But um, w- w- the meeting was pretty much done. And they're like, okay, well, this is a stupid idea. Um, how are you guys funding this? And they're like, oh, we have these Obamos. And they left the Obamos on the table yeah. and they left, they left the, the investors meeting. And the guy came running out and said, wait, you guys are sponsoring yourself with cereal. What the hell? And the guy thought it was hilarious, and then sponsored investing with them, and that's, that's how they hilarious. started up. All, all because they made cereal. Like, I don't know. It was just the whole like, the whole, <laughs> just like the fact that like they found like these obnoxious ways to sure. in, get investors to take them seriously or to give them a chance, and like businesses nowadays are trying to, they're, they're trying to uh, to take themselves so seriously and say like yeah we're the best of the best, but whatever. But these people like they. They just thought out of the box. They tried to do whatever they could to to yeah. make money, to do what they can to get to where they are now. For sure, and it's, you got to be able to do that. Just it's a, it's a purple cow it. factor. Pardon? It's the purple cow factor in marketing. It's like when exactly. you, you're driving along a highway, would you stop if you saw a purple cow? The question is <laughs> yes. Would you take pictures? Yes. The <laughs> fact that they came up with like cereal for of Obama O's. Obama O's. I think they had some of the comic. I, don't know, I thought it was. I mean, I was like, it's so obnoxious, and you don't like see that as like a, as a way to start off your business. But like, but it's it, just so out of the box. It. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was I don't different. know. Different. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> that's one business I admire just because of how they how they started off, and yeah. they didn't take no for an answer, and they yeah. kept trying. Even if it's on unorthodox ways of doing it, yeah. they got where they are now, and now like a few billion dollar company now. So. <sighs> Jeez, that's amazing, yeah. yo, for yeah. sure. So my next question would be like, um, what do you see yourself in like 10 years? Oh, God. Like, I, I know, like, yeah, that's one of those questions. I don't even know sometimes, but I'll make it easier. I'll answer, I'll answer it for myself, too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But, uh, yeah, this, that, this, just the idea for right now, it's not necessarily right here, right then, there. It's just the, the idea of the perspective. Sure. Um, so, obviously, I, I just started in, into advertising now. I literally just got into it. I graduated college. Yeah, congratulations. Um, so I'm really – oh, thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so, it's just like my – obviously, I want to have gained enough experience in the field to kind of make – I don't want to say a specialty, but kind of like have a good foundation mm-hmm. within with the field and like be obviously like a account director – kind of like higher up in the company sure. um like there's a few companies i would love to work at yeah um ewt for one which is again these are just advertising companies yeah. um sure. but I, I think one of the main things i want to be able to do is um kind of give back to a charity that's i've yeah. i've done a lot of volunteering in my my like college years or whatever but i wanted like one of the main things in advertising is obviously um trying to change perspective change behavior of certain people and if you can do that by giving back through charity and say like build it build in a way that like people are giving back and making a a better contribution to society i think if i can use my skills to do that and i find something that i've accomplished in that kind of aspect that would be amazing in the next 10 years is to be able to do something like that again you gotta you gotta learn and get those mentors and learn from the best and how you can build on yourself. So eventually you're in a good enough spot that you can start to be doing that kind of thing. Yeah, for uh, sure. I think there's something like that. And then later on again, so this is like 10 years, maybe start my own business as well. Start my own agency. Mm-hmm. Um, again, it's all about learning, trying to figure out every aspect of every bit of the business. This is a new, 
new field that I'm in because I've never like obviously I just went to school for advertising. Yeah. yeah. This is completely new. Yeah. Um, so I was, the next ten years, it's, I'm just going to be learning a lot, sure. and hopefully by then create something of my own. Yeah. And for sure. Back. Yeah. Yeah. Just like branching off of what you say, it's definitely about the development. Even like I, for myself, I see myself in ten years. It's like. I know my intention. I know the vision, but yeah. if you want the specifics right now, <laughs> yeah, that's right. something that, you know. That's something you gotta keep to yourself. I can't too. Be completely different. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> so, like, what you're saying is, giving back to the community is so is so like heartfelt for me as well. Because like that's where I started from. You know, that's where the majority of people start from and look at as a resource. And like seeing those people like that went through different situations that are similar to you or the people that are understanding your situation, they'll just get a better understanding of the concept and like be willing yeah. to help the next younger kid. So yeah. I, I have like something very close for like, just as much as you, like giving back to the community, younger kids, you know, yeah. no, no, no parents in their life or, you know, they're going through foster care or out of foster care, just to learn yeah. those skills like that, you know, it just changes kids' lives, like how it's been changed for me in a way. It's kind of funny for me. I kind of fell into it in a way. I kind yeah. of like searched it on a, my own. I guess my personality type and my ambitions in life. But yeah. sometimes you talk to that right kid at the right moment in time, it will just change his, uh, his perspective. You know, that's exactly it. Just be there for other people. Like they, you had, you probably had mentors in your life or people that inspired you, and yeah. hopefully you can inspire somebody else to kind of go down their own career path or their own life path. For sure on themselves yeah, yeah. i kind of find it like sometimes for like the person that maybe he's looking for the quote unquote father, father figure or like the role model type of person um to look up to and call on a daily basis sometimes for me like in that situation i didn't have any of that but i did find mm -hmm. traits in different people you know what i mean i was like okay that would be very cool to have father figure like or even like a role model yeah so i took those took those pieces from different people and I kind of designed like you know what this is probably the best way to go about it yeah that's uh, awesome man. that's yeah. great exactly um it's exactly the kind of people you want to be around it's people that you can learn from and pick like little traits or whatever yeah uh, I know sure. somebody was somebody told me that um you're closest you're, you're uh, uh kind of a mixture of your closest five friends so like you have your, your five friends and like, yeah you're a mixture yeah. of all the, their traits kind For of sure. together so it's just kind of like it was interesting. I was thinking about like different people that I would consider like close, like close friends. I'm like, yeah, yeah I have. Yeah, so I was just saying like different traits from everybody. Yeah. Like close to five, like my five friends maybe, and like yeah, that kind of like build my own character. And Obviously. hopefully, like you find other people that like are trying to be in, like in, trying to aspire to something, or like you 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 admire for whatever yeah. reason. Yeah. Kind of like build that build off that, or help. Hopefully, you can build some of your traits that you've collected and give that off to somebody yeah. else's right kind of help them so it's just kind of interesting yeah. that you know what i relate from that is when you say that you become like the five people um you're around is that your net worth is your network and, yeah and that's the i'm reading a book right now by a uh, porter gale it's honestly it's amazing like your net worth is your network it's totally 110 percent correct like for me i have a small net i have a small network so that means I'm really, I'm very rich. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's my mentality of it. Cause yeah. I don't have a lot of friends. I only keep it very small. Yeah. Like that's all I need. Just like one, maybe two. Yeah. In a business world, in a business sense, <laughs> I have my friends, but yeah. like in a business world, I have like one, you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe two. Yeah. <laughs> True. You know what I mean? yeah. yeah. I feel it, man. Sure. I feel it. For sure. Awesome. I, cool. oh, I, just to just to like backtrack, sure. and just to backtrack from the to the app. What was the app name again? Sure. Uh, so the company name. The company name, yeah. Was blank link. Blank so, link. Like blanc, like the, the French word for white. Okay. Blanc link, and then the application itself called uh, Blanc Ride. So blanc ride. I pronounce it Blank Ride. Yeah. But, yeah. And so. is it still active to this day? Uh, I'd assume so. Again, I haven't been on it for a long time, like a, few, guys, like a year or two. You guys started it, right? But yeah, so I don't have any part of it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I think they, um, they uh, last time I checked in on them, they started something called Blank uh, Blank Labs. So it's yeah. about like creating new technology and stuff. 
Yeah. Um, so they might have like adapted that and like I kind of put that towards their main their main uh, thing right now. So yeah. I'd, have to, I'd have to double check. Yeah, like, for I, sure. I haven't been on it in a while. For, um, for the people, like, for the people that don't don't know, um, you you guys sold it. Yeah. Nice. Like, well, I sold like again. I'm not part of the company anymore, so mm. I, there are still people that are affiliated with it that are still part of it. Mm. Um, but it's just like a uh, smaller so. Um, Blanc, Blank Link is like the parent company. Yeah. It's a bigger company. The Umbrella, I guess. And then we have the different like affiliates underneath it. Oh, so it's like the holding company, right? And exactly. Ventures. exactly. Yeah. So they, they might have sold it off, but they still have a lot of other initiatives going on. For sure, yeah. Once you so go into... want to like, learn more about us, like uh, it's called Blank Link, and yeah. that's the main, the main company name. For sure. Yeah, I'll um, leave it in the link below. They have stuff underneath it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's a, that's amazing, man. <laughs> that started up a company and then you know taking off of it and then <laughs> you yeah, know, be, yeah, going to the heights, yeah, yeah. Um, so. so we'll get into the second segment. Sure. You could get if you need a break or anything, get some water. I don't know. Uh, okay, uh, I, I would. You take a break for a second. Mm-hmm. I should. I guess that would've been a good idea to get some water, but I'm good. It's okay. Fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine too. I just drink for the interview. I guess <laughs> first time doing this, just let it go. <laughs> So the second segment is the marketing questions. So, okay, so marketing questions. So explain to like the general public, for the people that don't know, sure. um, what is uh, marketing advertisement? Like what, what's the sense of it? What are, they, what are they expecting from you? Generally in marketing um, and advertising, I guess. So marketing, again, um, is kind of broad. Advertising itself is just a small aspect of marketing, yeah, um, there's different like uh, there's different types, but uh, and c- it kind of encom- like in, in a sense, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah. Uh, so what marketing is is they're kind of changing or altering a buying behavior or a preconceived perception of uh, of a certain idea, a brand. Um, so again, if you're so like when you're trying to change a buying behavior, mm-hmm. so you're so used to buying a certain pair of shoes or something. What marketing is trying to do is to incentivize or motivate you or change your perception as on to what what you're doing right now. So they're they're trying to change that behavior yeah. or preconceived idea that you already have to something else, whether it fits uh, a different brand, um, and I like again an idea or charity, yeah. whatever. It's just changing the preconceived that, notion, so, right? Pre- same. right? Yeah. So that goes from anything from like. You buy a chocolate bar. You buy a, your same chocolate bar every day, but we're trying to promote or showcase that. Like, why is this chocolate bar better than another one? Yeah. Or why is it that you're um, you're watching this TV channel or this? You're you're going to you're watching. Um, I think of an example because there's like, again, there's so many different types of advertising and marketing. Yeah, and sure. It keeps changing. And it's like nowadays, before like old advertising, it was just TV shows. It was like out of home, so like billboards. It was very like just like regular couch potato, but like as yeah. as technology grows and how marketing changes, mm-hmm. it's become more subtle. Yeah, uh, and it's just like one, one example. It's something called programmatic marketing. Okay. I don't know if you know that. Where it's like we target you based on your behavior, right? Like where you're located. Yeah. Um, what's that's kind of interesting is you could be watching a television show. Say we're watching The Simpsons or Big yeah. Bang Theory. Sure. Both will watch at the same time. You could get an ad tailored to you, and I get a different ad to me. Get That's out a, of here. Yeah, we're the working toward. They've already started that. Wow. Because so I, noti- like, I, I noticed that on websites for sure. Like, well, on websites are obvious. Cause they, but based off, like, so it's called, like, they can track you. So if you're on your Facebook on your phone, mm-hmm. if you're on your phone right here, and I'm, like, looking up shoes, and I stop, and I put it down, it would then... Go to your computer and set up as you to do to look at to like a discount on the like Aldo shoes or something. Yeah, yeah. A little, a little trick I learned, which is kind of funny. Um, for most websites, mm-hmm. say so. Say you're shopping online. Yeah. You you put in your cart. You leave it in your cart for a day. Yeah. That same website will then email you or show you an ad mm. and say fifty percent off, twenty percent off. Wow. I never buy my materials, my online items on the same day. I always wait a day or two. Like I put it in my little cart. I leave it there. Yeah. Wait a day or two. Hey, 15% off my shoes. Sweet. Thanks. Take them. Yeah. Like, I get 
but and that's just how it goes because yeah. like they're talking you they're understanding the little things your buying yeah. your cookies or whatever right yeah, uh, yeah yeah and marketing young smarter and yeah. you don't even realize how much they know about you but again yeah. it's just all privacy versus like all that stuff right yeah. but it's just like it's so cool learning about like understanding consumer behavior patterns and like purchasing the yeah, purchasing behavior and stuff where it's like yeah. it's just understanding you as an individual and changing that yeah. and it, altering stuff based on like, your habits and stuff yeah. so i know i know it's just well, like there's a lot of stuff that yeah. i've learned about like consumer behavior and purchasing patterns and stuff sure. uh, a lot of like psychology goes into it as well yeah. uh, understanding like well i i well, testing like see what works with oh, this, sorry do you hear me yeah it, it's better now yeah yeah, I was saying there's, there's so many like psychology that that's intertwined into marketing. Yes, where it's like, um, whether it just be some of the simple as like certain colors that work well. Yeah. Um, you a lot of banks like there's like a lot of warm colors because it's safe, it's security. Um, yeah. I, you know what yeah. I gotta say about that is thank you, Justin Sto- Snowden, man, for exposing that. Thank you, you Justin. What? I, I was gonna say Jane, thank you, Justin Snowden, for exposing that. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that changed yeah. everyone's world, you know. Yeah, seriously though. You, you know what's funny? Like when it comes down to marketing and different ways they implement the advertisements. I saw this really sick ad on Twitter, and um, basically it was an Adidas ad, and they're recreating a new positive wave. They call it, and it's this. You know how on social media there's so much of that negativity. There's always like, um, for example, how not on YouTube. There's so much like you can get funny videos, but you can also get like those fights and those those negative yeah. type of videos. But this Adidas flipped that and it made it into a positive wave, like filming something and yeah. making it go viral as it's positive. It's a crazy. Kind of cool. It's a crazy. I'll send it to you. I'll send it. Yeah, to that's you. kind of cool to see. I haven't seen for that sure. one yet. And for people, cool. who, and for people who want to check that out, I'll put in the link below. And I, what I do, I I liked it and I I commented on it. And, oh, Adidas, and then it showed- Adidas liked like my comment that I replied, yeah. and I was like, "Yo, this is phenomenal!" Like <laughs> the way they're like triggering. Dude, that's all you gotta do. To me, you gotta flip, you gotta flip the script with anything. Yeah. What people are not gonna expect. What's kind of interesting now um, is how, how much power consumers have over a uh, brand now. But they don't know that. Brands would just like push you different ad and saying like, For sure. "This is what." you're going to expect Eat but no this. no consumers yeah. can see the back, the back end is understanding what a brand identity is about yeah. and now consumers can kind of like dictate whether a brand is good or bad where it's like if this brand isn't more than just about selling if they don't have a cause behind them if they don't have initiative if they're not socially or economically um benefiting benefiting society mm-hmm. nobody's gonna care so like sure. nike is a great example like and the idea is a lot of shoe people like they are more than just a, an, a brand, right? So mm-hmm. one of the things that like, Nike was doing recently was like empowering women. They showed had a whole campaign about empowerment. Um, there's one where like women were running at night, and it's like how they have to empower women because they want to make sure they feel safe at night. And it's like yeah. it, they had a whole a whole uh, campaign about that, wow. and like consumers loved it. And that's exactly they should love it because that's that's great. No, women should. It's, and it's just like thing. brands are changing their identity because they're more than just selling a product. They're just, sure. So yeah. I don't. Yeah, that, I can go on about that, but it's just yeah. it's kind of cool to to learn how it, brands are changing and how yeah. consumers are making that change happen. Yeah, even for like when down the road, when when we have kids at the same time, when we have our families and we have kids, and you, you have a young daughter, seeing those type of ads is a big deal. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's a huge thing. Yeah. Um, just going to the next question is I'm, I was asking I'm going to ask you like um, so what's your position in the field of marketing mm-hmm. advertising like sure yeah yeah sure so right now um, so officially because I'm just done school I'm like a project manager yeah. but I, as I'm in a small company so it's more client services okay. so my goal or like at least what I what I do right now is more like um, strategy um, understanding your main vision as a client and as internally as a company. Yeah. Um, making sure the client understands what is expected, like and what internally as a company we can do to deliver to you. So it's just being that in between and making sure 
the brand identity and brand goal and vision, the mission statement is being addressed when we're making, making creatives or delivering ads or targeting the right audience. It's just making sure the full, like the, the whole um, campaign, yeah. whether that, whatever it is, whatever they're, they're paying us for That's is right. being accomplished. So just that middleman between the client. That's what I'm saying, middleman, yeah. Exactly how it is, making sure those relationships are good to go. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much what my position is right now. Um, it's just client relations. That's awesome, man. Yeah, <laughs> that's very important because they got to talk to you before anything goes forward because you can block them off for saying, you know what, this idea is good, but here's how to make it better, you know. Exactly, and making yeah. sure that they stay on, on brand, right? So a lot of people, like, they have some out, ran, outlandish ideas that they mm. want to do a Stuff. but if it's not on brand it's not fitting your identity because again consumers need to yeah. have an idea of what the brand is and if you're saying if you're being comedic in one thing and then you're being serious in another and you're like what kind of brand like what yeah. what are you, you talking to what are you trying to convey just simple things like that can go a long way to making sure that then consumer is a part of your brand or they're sure. buying so that goes into like the brand growth like, how do you yeah. play a part in the brand growth? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the it just direction. like the direction. Um, it's kind of like social listening as well, understanding where your audience is, um, what what do they think is like, valuable. So what's like what's called like your unique selling point. What is what is that uh, distinctive about your brand, your company mm-hmm. that sets you apart from your competition, and how are you going to speak on that, and how are you going to make that grow. Um, just again, there's like a variety of things. Just making sure your brand, your mm. company understands who they are yeah. and who they're talking to yeah. and how they're gonna grow. It's yeah. probably the easiest way of describing it. Yeah, for sure. And what makes like personally, I know it makes me want to click someone's website, but what makes you want to click someone's website? Because you know the game already. You know, you, you know, <laughs> and you're learning it. And so, so yeah, well, yeah. But I have what a makes more you want to click their website opposed to? It's an average one. It's as simple as does it provide me value? If it doesn't provide me any value, if it whether it be as hey, I need new socks to hey, they have a great cause, I want to support that. They have to understand me as an the audience member. Mm-hmm. Again, as a brand, you're not going to speak to everybody. Yeah. So many companies are like, I'm like, I'll ask them like, who are you talking to? Who's your audience? They're like, oh, everybody. Yeah, it's kind of. It's not it's the broad. case. You it's understand. Broad. Who is too, it's too broad? Like, sure, like I would love to speak to everybody. I want everybody to come to my business. Yeah. That's great. But if you are targeting a twenty-two-year-old straight male who is active, mm-hmm. you, but you also want that fifty-six-year-old female who has four kids um, and is a stay-at-home mom. Like, we're gonna different have different directions. different directions, and you're not gonna be able to. If you're trying to target both of them, you're gonna miss both of them and get nobody. Yeah. So just understanding that as well, right? Understanding so. brand audience, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. you gotta have, you gotta have the direction of like who's your who's your core audience, who's your audience core audience, yeah. and then that core audience will click on whatever you th- whatever is valuable to them. Yeah, and right. There's, and there's like seven there's seven billion plus people in the world, man. You mm-hmm. you get like one yeah. percent, you get like <laughs> half a percent, you're gonna do well. <laughs> you but know I, what I mean? I, yeah, even still, but and like you do, you do do well. Yeah, but you grow yeah. and you build different niches that will target different people. True. Mike, like, I keep going back to Nike because I just was reading about them this morning. Yeah. But like, sure, they're they're targeting they they originally were targeting maybe like male athletes who yeah. are like yeah I'm active. But you go from anywhere, anywhere from now to like younger women to older your grandma. Nike itself is so big now. Yeah. Because Roan. And they've been able to segment their audiences and have different things talking to them. We read it. We read that in uh, uh, Phil Knight's book, um, Nike. Were you reading uh, that? Like the story behind no, Nike? Or... That, I was reading like a Forbes article. Oh, okay. Tomorrow. Cool. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's where I read it. it was, yeah, I was wondering it. if it was from the book. I was like, oh, shoot. I might, they might have quoted it from the book. Yeah. I'm not quite sure. But like, I was, that's how I was reading it today. Yeah. It was just like that. Like, Again, yeah, you got to start somewhere. You got to start a small pond and understand your audience. Yeah. Definitely. Then you can build from there, but you guys are somewhere. You can you can't just be like jump in. Yeah, for sure. That's yeah. sure. Um, my next question is, uh, what makes LinkedIn relevant? I remember we talked about LinkedIn before. 
But I was yeah. just like mind blown from the things you're saying. I was like, really? <laughs> like LinkedIn? Like the, like the average person, like what? We're, we're like 24, and like the average person our age would be like, LinkedIn, really? Is that still relevant for our generation? It is very relevant. <laughs> like it's you put me onto it, and I realized yeah. it. Yeah, it is really I didn't like I, I guess I learned about it in like university a few years back but yeah. um, you gotta so LinkedIn is um, the biggest professional networking tool in the world um, and again it's where you can follow industry leaders you can mm -hmm. follow peers that are also in the industry um, and how I kind of look at it is like you got to treat yourself as a brand mm -hmm. Excuse me. so you, you're trying to build your own platform. Yeah. So again, I'm not going to have a website. Excuse me. I'm not going to have a website that people are going to come to me and learn all about me. But if people want to look me up, they want to find me. That's 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 my platform, right? Sure. Um, it's a place to share industry news. It's like if you want to know what's up, people are curating content that's des specific to your industry because mm -hmm. you're following all these people that are for business, whether it be marketing, finance, whatever it is. You're going to be up to date right away. Because there's people there, right? Yeah. Also, I keep going back to networking. It's like, sure, you might have like your core, your core people that like who you're gonna build your career off of, mm -hmm. but you have to be able to network and understand the resources that are available. So, if someone came to me and said, "No, I need someone to film something," I'm not gonna be like, "Oh, I have somebody on my phone who I'm gonna text because I talked to him on Tuesday and he's a film artist or whatever." Yeah. I'm gonna look at my LinkedIn and be like, "Who's in film production yeah. that?" I Connected with, and I have these connections with, and I'm able to use that resource. It's like a giant resource bubble that I can yeah. just click on. Like, hey man, how are you doing? Let's get a good coffee, catch up, and kind of utilize those resources, right? Yeah, yeah. So even as a startup company, you like the world is your resource, right? Yeah, it is. You true. need to be able to uh, drop a hat and say, I need this specific um, person or type of person or yeah. whatever it is to get me into this right yeah if you sure. talk to a random company that you don't know you have no relationship with exactly. they're gonna do an arm and a leg and you're gonna be broke before you even start for sure but if you have sort of in some relationship linkedin is gonna be there so and you're gonna people. have to connect with that person right yeah because i know um, and it's the biggest... yeah i noticed some like industry leaders as well like uh gary vanderchuk and like uh gerard adams i was like oh shoot they're on they're on of linkedin you know, like this is like coming from the perspective of like, oh, uh, no, I'm not going to use LinkedIn. You know what I mean? For business sense. But then you get into it and you realize these industry leaders are on there. And yeah. <laughs> it's really the world's your oyster from there too. build a yeah, rapport. <laughs> like, you you build a rapport and just talk. Like you start curating good content. You start talking, making yourself, a, your, that's your own platform right there. People are going to come to you and ask for your, your advice and they see that you're, create engagement and talking about stuff that is relevant to them right now. Yeah. Of course I'm going to go. Why not? For sure. So, oh, for sure. Uh, and it's just like, you never want to burn any bridges, right? Because like, I'm going to be at a company right now and like, I'm going to add them all on LinkedIn and yeah. leave that company. I'm going to follow their career path based on LinkedIn and see yeah. where they're at. Now. Maybe they'll go like, hey, I'm looking to, in five years, I'm looking to start my own company or 10 years. And I see that, hey, this guy did all these three different things X, y, it's gonna be perfect because yeah. i'm not gonna be like i'm not gonna follow up with all these people that i worked with my whole life and say oh i know exactly what's going on in your life but if i see that you you are a vp or something now and we both started the career together i know you're you're aspiring to do more stuff yeah and i'm gonna i'm gonna look to you and say hey go get a coffee let's maybe we can collaborate and do something together sure. so maybe one isn't like right now maybe right now you're not going to be utilized into the best of the abilities but building that network building that database of people that yeah. you can utilize later on in your career right I or even that. build off of yeah i heard a quote this morning um it was like don't um don't build wide uh build deep so meaning yeah. like get to know someone you know what i mean get to know the layers of someone and get to know them as a person as, as opposed yeah. to meeting someone right. now tomorrow i'll meet the next person and tomorrow i'll meet the next person get to know the person yeah. invest your time you know yeah i feel it like matters it. it matters for sure for yeah sure. um cool. so the next the next one is um then so next one is where can people find you um i know obviously through linkedin <laughs> uh, uh that's probably the best socials. thing 
regarding, um, regarding the I business, mean, the company you work for? Um, well, I worked at Brand and Mortar. Okay, um, I'll link them that's down. My, that's my, you can look them up on LinkedIn as well. They're, we're a small uh, digital creative shop. Okay. It's great being a small company because, again, you can, like, there's less red tape and you can just kind of, like, when you, when you have an idea, you can go yeah. with it, which is awesome. So that's, Sweet. I, love, I'm, I love the place I'm at right now. So yeah. um, there's there's that. It's located so, in Toronto, right? Yeah, lo- located in Toronto. Yeah. 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 Is, it like um, a, is it a Toronto um, brand? Like, is it a Toronto upbringing or? Oh, for sure. Yeah, we nice. started. That kind of cool is my boss actually went to the same program I went to in Centennial College. Yeah, so yeah. We, we did exactly the same program. Wow. And that's kind of the bonding thing we talked about in my that's interview. Awesome. I'm like, so it's just like, even just the, him as a mentor right there, it's like he legitimately did the same program I did. And now he has his own agency. I'm like, so it's like, that's exactly what I want to do. Yeah, for that's, sure. Why wouldn't I go there? That's exactly, he did the path that I'm, that I want to take. Yeah, and there's potential, he possibly will take a global, obviously, advertisement. Soon it'll be global. Yeah, exactly, right? Wow. So it's just cool. But yeah, so yeah, so LinkedIn, yeah. check me out, like Facebook, just Noah Murphy, like anywhere. Okay. I'll link, um, I'll link them all down below. It's like the them all. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Add me. Add me on Snapchat, Twitter. Yeah. I don't know. Like, oh, do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, find me whatever. Yeah, awesome. Oh, that's my phone going off. Huh. Awesome. So, yeah, any last any last things for the viewers? You know, like any last thoughts <laughs> about life or what, what piece well, of advice you'll give them? I keep going back to success, right? Yeah. So, it just like. If you have, you, obviously people like at our age, we kind of have, have an idea, but it's not nothing really solidified. Yeah. Um, and just, just, but like, don't worry about that. If things will change. Just take every opportunity that comes, comes in your in your path, mm-hmm. but make the best of it. Don't take anything for anything for granted. Yeah. Work 110 percent in what you're doing now, mm-hmm. and just opportunities will come. And it's just be present um, in that day and time, both mentally and physically. And um, if you're put 100 percent in. You network and you're you actually enjoy what you're doing that will, that will take you further than trying to half like i don't want to sorry half ass everything yeah. right yeah of course so just put out 10 percent into everything you do mm-hmm. have some vision and be better than you were yesterday you'll look 10 years from now and be like yeah. ceo of your own company <laughs> or whatever yeah. it is you, you, you want yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah my final thoughts would be like first of all don't underestimate someone's potential because I, yeah. I see it a lot. Like people love to underestimate people to the lowest degrees. I'm just like, well, what's the purpose? You don't know the story of what he's going to be doing, you know? Um, yeah. And also it's also, I'll say to people's consistency is something I'm learning this year and I've re- really applied and I see the results. Consistency, even though you, we all go through ups and downs, but once you're, Honestly, day to day, um, keep going. Sorry about that. Day to day, <laughs> keep going in and out of of your business or whatever the case may be, whatever you want to do. You, yeah. just, you get better of it over time, and just have that. You know, have a faith and and meet people. That's what I gotta yeah. say. For sure. <laughs> for sure. And the one last thing I, I was yeah. one person told me is like, don't compare yourself to other people because you don't know what's going on in their life. There's so many other things going on. Compare yourself to yourself, yep. and as I keep like it, it keeps goes hand in hand with that success, right? Yeah. You're comparing yourself to what you were yesterday, yeah. to what you were this morning, and if you're better than that person, that person you were this morning, you you were yesterday, then you're moving forward. Definitely, you cannot compare yourself to other people because you only see what's on the surface. Exactly. You don't know what's going on the rest of the life or underneath, right? So definitely, exactly. so. Leave on that good. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. Oh, this is this is sick. Podcast no, no. number one. <laughs> That's Wait, amazing. I'll be watching a lot more of these podcasts. I'd love yeah. to see people on here and hopefully like some snippets of like different people and like yeah. some advice. And, yeah, hopefully like, to you too, man. Like I hope to be able to catch up later on in life and see that oh, you're for sure. We're gonna be working together for sure. Like. It's crazy, like, I, like you're getting a sense of who I am. I'm like, if I love something, if I want to do something, I get it done. You know what I mean? I'm awesome. a doer. You know what I mean? So, awesome. yeah, I'm just happy I could, I met with you, and then we could do this. <laughs> Next thing, we can, you know, figure out something, what if, what I'm doing. We can talk about that a little yeah. later, and, yeah, we'll, we'll keep growing. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Murphy. Right. Yeah. 
No, I'm with you, man. <laughs> Thank you for doing this podcast, man. I appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having me. For sure. Glad to be able to come on. If you guys enjoyed this podcast, leave your feedback in the comment section down below. Like this video. Subscribe to the channel. And I'll be posting more content. Peace.